Recording has started. Uh, so first of all, I think in my opinion, what I personally call principles are these kind of guides that player must follow in, in during a match. Why? Because when we have an outlet, for example, when we have a PC, when we have a long corner, normally we can more or less be prepared to what the player should expect of which positions to, should they have, which positions the other team will have, and how to act after that. But there are so many situations in the game, the game is so complex that there are moments that it's impossible to know what's going on perfectly. So the player is going to be finding himself all the time in, in situations that he doesn't know. So in this moment is where the principle should be the guide, okay? Principle should be really easy, principle should be the same for all the team, and for me it's very important that we all know them, okay? That we coach with them and that the players can adapt to them, okay? And this is a very nice discussion. Um, I remember Chiche was there also, was in a, in a course in, in Breda a couple of years ago, um, and the whole course was about principles or patterns. What we call patterns when we say, okay, we have an outlet, the center defender gives it to a right defender, the right defender passes it down the line, that's a pattern. When we talk about principle, we talk about every time a player has the ball, the decision making, which is the priority, what should we look for, and these kind of things. Of course, patterns in the short term are more effective. It's easy to say, okay, every time you have the ball, you pass it to this one or to that one. That's very easy. But in the end, it's very easy to defend as well if another team can analyze it. In the long term, uh, our objective as coaches has to be to develop principles, to develop intelligent players that can make good decisions. That should be our aim. And I don't think that because we want to be better in the short term, that we want to win a game, we should change that priority. That should always be our priority. So first of all, this is a quote I really like from Mourinho, okay? So what he's saying is that he wants that when a player has a ball, anybody in his team, all the rest that are on the pitch will expect the same action. And I think this is the most important, and this is why I try to work with principles. I want that at any certain point of the match, when a player has the ball, all the teammates know what to expect that is going to be going on. This is for me the best way of communication, this is having the same language, this is working together, and I think this is the key to build a really strong team. So I'm going to show you a bit, this is what I worked, what I prepared for my club, okay, I'm working in Leuven, in Belgium, I'm living here, I'm, right, I'm here right now. Um, so these are the principles, the system we created, what we try to do for all the youth and try to grow it from there to the top teams. So first of all, the most important thing for me, and I put it every time I have a briefing, a meeting, anything, for me this is number one. For me, enjoying hockey, we cannot forget about this. Sometimes as coaches we forget it, but even though here in Belgium that some players are professionals, uh, when we start playing hockey we play to enjoy it. We don't go there to, to be suffering or, or to be angry. We play to enjoy it. And I think this is something that when we are creating our philosophy, when we are creating our training, whatever we are doing, we should always be think, thinking of this. And something I try to do all the time is think, okay, if I'm a player here, would I like this? Would I enjoy it? And I don't think we should confuse enjoying with having fun. That for me are two different things. Of course, there are going to be trainings, there are going to be situations where the players are going to have a make an effort, and that's something that is maybe not so nice for them. But I enjoy when we when we are challenged. If it's a good challenge, if it's a good training, if it's dynamic, if it's fun, for me, that's really important. And I don't think we should never forget it. So basically this is very personal for me i enjoy hockey when i play with the ball as a player or as a coach i want to play with the ball i don't enjoy defending that doesn't mean i'm not going to work because i need to do it of course and this is basically it. when we have the ball we want to play smart and we want to attack and when we don't have it we want to recover it as fast as possible because we want to play again there are a lot of more things of tactics strategies i think this is something that we don't have to forget this is the basic we don't have the ball, we want it back, we have it, let's play, let's enjoy. Okay, so from this first slide that I use every time I have a meeting, we will keep going forward. Okay, so these are the principles that we have defined in attack. Okay, so number one, and this is very personal, eh? you can have maybe, I have talked to many people that I know we have very similar hockey ideas on how we want our teams to play, and maybe our principles are arranged different, we have different focus, 
So this is very personal. I will just share the example of the ones I use, the ones I like. This doesn't mean you need to copy, and I don't think you should. I think you should create the ones for yourself. For me, the whole point is just to give this as example and to make you think what you could do for your own team. When I first, I first made the principles, the first thing I thought was, okay, what are the things I, I am constantly re repeating in trainings? What am I asking for for the players all the time that for me is so important? And from that guideline, I created these principles. So let's go to number one, is play the superiority. Okay, we will explain it very fast. Hopefully the animations and the videos run along. Please let me know if that's okay. Number one. When we have the ball, okay, we are the white team in this example, we always, this is something a coach used to tell me, I played defender, he told me, Javi, you always need to be counting on what side we have more players. Where we have more players, we need to try to get the ball to that side. So this is a very clear example, it's an outlet, it's simple to see. On the, on the side of the ball, we will usually have less numbers because the other team will defend there. So here, as you can see, we have a 4v5 on the red side, but if we can make a transfer, we have a 3v2. Okay, so the idea of this principle is, first of all, to look for a free player, because usually in our outlets we will have a free player if they have a free man in their back, and also to play the 2v1, okay? So this would be the free player in this case, and also this would be the 2v1 situation. Something very important, if we make this transfer but we don't make it fast enough, it's useless because all the other team will come to this side and reposition. When we do these kinds of things, the speed is very important, but that we will check it in another principle. Okay, I'm going to put the first video. Please let me know if you can watch it properly. Anyway, I will stop it. I will talk to our pictures, let's say. Okay. So, first of all, this is uh, China with the ball. This is in the last World Cup. They are playing against England. If you see, the Chinese players have the ball on their bottom right part of the field under a lot of pressure. Okay, as you see, this is all red. Okay, and on the other side is all yellow. So of course, this principle says we must try to take the ball to the side where we have more players. Okay, so here the objective should be to go to the opposite side. Okay, that's an amazing pass for sure. And yet again, okay, we are with the ball in the middle of the pitch. We have a choice to be make a decision. On the right, more reds. On the left, more yellows. Always look for a superiority. So we keep watching. Okay, he keeps the ball very good. Pass to the left. And now we have a 2v1 on the opposite side, just like in the animation, and a free player that is the one receiving the ball at this point. Okay? This situation ends up being an amazing goal. That's not the important. The important is playing with the principles. We started on the right side under a lot of pressure. We ended up entering the circle on the left side with superiority. That's the whole idea. Another example, this is Germany playing in Rio Olympics. Okay, you see already they are passing double back and they are already starting to, to spread their defense on the left side. They know they're going to transfer and this is exactly the point. They all know what they're going to do. Okay, so they start to put more numbers on the left and at this point already you can see they have more numbers. They can play the superiority. Okay, so it's a pass outside. Then you have an easy 2v1 and you have the left defender getting the ball on the T in the circle with no pressure there. So for sure, this is a good example of how to play the superiority. Continue. Okay, as I was saying, when we see the outlets, it's really easy to see as the superiority because always the other team has one player down. But this doesn't mean that we cannot play it when we are attacking. When we are attacking many times, we will be with less numbers. But this principle also includes the fact of creating the superiority, not only looking, because of course, if I have a 2v1, I know I want to play the 2v1 and I want to play a superiority. We all know that. This principle is a bit more tricky when we are playing with less numbers and we need to find a way of creating superiority. Okay, so don't read, I don't want you to read, it's just what I said. So the different ways of creating superiority is first of all, winning a 1v1 duel. Of course, the 1v1 is not superiority, but if we win it, what comes after, will be superiority. Win by associating, by making passes, okay? That could be give and go, or what we call the third man. I will explain you now what it is, if you don't know it. That's a football concept. And of course, once we create the first superiority, once we break the first line, let's say, after that, it's going to keep coming, okay? And that's what we call the domino effect. If one falls, they will keep falling behind. If I win my first duel, 
I can keep looking in the pitch for other situations of 2v1 or superiority. Here example, this is Mannheim in, in Germany. Okay, I think it's very slow, so don't worry, I will stop it. Okay, this part is not important, they are creating the space, getting in positions. Okay, sorry it's in Spanish, I forgot to change this one. At this point exactly, if you see that the players inside the red square, I am not counting this one, and I am not, I don't, th I don't think you can see my point, yes you can. I am not counting this one behind either, and inside the square we are having four blue players against five red ones, okay? Because we have a free man there, that is the number five. So at this moment this attack has less numbers, it's inferiority, let's say. But if we keep watching what they do, okay, they are passing under pressure, and as soon as they are passing, you have both these players winning their duel without the ball, okay? So now I will tell you what, if this guy gets the ball again, for me that's a give and go. When the same player that passes it gets it again, it's a give and go. Of course, maybe this guy doesn't get it and keeps running to a circle, it will still be a give and go, but when you can make these really short, fast combinations, it's really good. And if this guy, that is a third player, because you have player number one, the one passing the ball, player number two, the one receiving, and player number three, the one winning by surprise, for me, this is the third man, and if you play with him, that's what I call, and in football they call, the third man. So these two guys win their duel, they get the ball, and from a situation where they started with four players against five, so with less numbers, they created successfully the superiority and they got to a two players against the goalkeeper, okay, with an amazing finish, an amazing goal. Okay, so this, this is what I want to make clear. Play the superiority is also about creating it, not only about I see the 2v1, I do it, because that's we should all know that. Principle number two. Please, eh, if somebody has a question, write in the chat. I'm looking at it. Don't, don't wait till the end, okay? Let's try not to make it a monologue and try to have more dynamic. I don't like being in front of the screen. It's a bit weird, but okay. Principle number two, I call it stick to stick, okay? This principle is all about the quality of the passing. Nowadays, uh, in order to have dynamic hockey, it's really important the quality in how we pass the ball and how we receive it, of course. So for that, the pass has to be strong, has to be flat or on the ground, it cannot be bouncy, and has to be to the face of the stick of my teammate, okay? And this is very important because I know that some of you are not playing in water pitches, okay? So when you play in sand, when you play in other surfaces, it's really important to try to focus on the quality of the passes. Why? If I get a pass, I'm, I'm a defender, I'm getting a pass, that pass is bouncing, and I have to really focus on stopping the ball. When I stop it, it's not going to be in a perfect position, so then I'm going to take one or two more seconds to put the ball where I want it. It's, it's a, a lot of time waste. But if I have a perfect pass on the ground to my stick, instead of focusing on watching how the ball is coming, I'm already looking forward. So I'm already checking with pre-scanning what's going in front, so I can earn a bit of seconds there. And then, as soon as I stop it, if I put my stick properly, I will have it ready the ball to go for the next action, okay? So that's many seconds that you are winning. So that's why the, the quality of the passes is so important. An example, this is Spain in the last World Cup. Okay, so they just passes stick to stick, stick to stick. One of the things I want to say at this point, if you look, now that pass is to the backhand of the player. Okay, but it's actually not to the back, and that player could have moved and get it on the face of the stick, like we say. He's getting it on the backhand because he had looked before receiving, and he knows he's going to play forward. So he's already stopping the ball in a position where he knows how to do the next action. So okay, if you look slow motion, there are two touches already to the next player. Okay, look at this guy. He gets the ball. Look how he's already looking for the left foot of the defender. Okay, stick to stick. Let's go slowly so you can watch it. Stick to stick, one touch deflection, stick to stick, stick to stick, and a perfect goal. Why I like this example? There is nobody doing a 3D skill, there is nobody doing weird things with the ball, it's just passing and receiving. Perfect quality, and most important, a lot of understanding between the teammates, knowing what's the next action, getting in good positions, preparing to what's coming, okay? so. Sometimes we see this uh, amazing level, we see the World Cup, and we see players that do things that maybe we cannot transfer to our players. But when we talk about stick-to-stick, -stick, 
it thinks that even with not an amazing technique, I think if we work on the concepts, on the ideas, on the decision making, we can achieve things like this. Okay, so that's why I like to emphasize on this point. Next one. And this is one, something I like a lot. Usually we think that stick to stick is all about the player on the ball. Okay, so yeah, you have the ball, you didn't pass it to a teammate, it's your fault. And no, it's not like this 90% of the time. Um, I put the case of the left defender, that is usually a guy that gets the ball under a lot of pressure. If I want to play stick to stick, I am the left defender, I have the ball at this point. Do you think I can make a pass to a stick of my teammates? And when I say stick to stick, to stick also means that it doesn't have to go on top of the defender's sticks, between the legs of the defender, it has to be a clear pass in a straight line to a teammate. So in this case, for example, there's no option, and this happens a lot, okay? How many times a player loses the ball, the coach, the coach thinks it's that player's fault and say, okay, but who is, who is helping him? Who is providing an easy way out for that player? So if this is a case, we need to understand, okay, this is what I like when I'm the teammate, I like to think, okay, where can I receive the ball? Can I get it here? If I cannot get it, I need to look for a place where I can get it. So first of all, we must understand to which spaces the ball could go, and then we need to move to try to get in those positions, okay? Now, we have three different options that the ball could go there. So now is the moment for the player on the ball to make a decision. Okay, I have three options. I could give it to any of the three. Okay, I will choose the one I think is the best one. Okay, so that's the idea. Be able to make it easier for the decision of the player on the ball. An example. This is Germany. Okay, I will stop it. You have a player on the box. This happens every time. Passing, receives the ball, okay, and look at this. So these are the three possible options this guy is having, and this is also the, the windows, I call it from the box. So it's the, the between lines options that we have between the Spanish players that are pressing. So this is it, eh? you have the ball, maybe you are lacking an offensive option, but this guy is not even looking forward, so I don't think, I think they all know he's not going to go forward. So you have three options, okay, and it's just a matter of the player on the ball, decide which one he thinks is the best one. But that's the idea, to have at least two or three options every time. Okay, okay, I choose this one, simple and clear. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm reading Sergio's comment, it's really good, of course. It's really important to know how to play with the ball. And the other day, I, somebody was saying that the top teams know how to play much better without the ball than with the ball. Because there is a stat that I think that in international level, a player has the ball less than three minutes on his stick, okay? So you have, if you are playing 60 minutes, okay, without subbing, you have 57 minutes where you are playing without the ball. So knowing how to play without the ball is maybe much, much more important than playing when you have it. Next example, this is Holland in Champions Trophy in Breda, okay? Now you see at this point, they get the ball here, they are starting the attack, they have four player combination, okay? And again, the important is every time getting open, okay? And also trying to understand what he will do. Look at this guy, right now he's next to a defender, he's not a, an option, but look at him, follow him, he's two, three step back, now he's an option, and also he's making all the defenders come to him, so he's making that one be open, and again, pass between the line, he can pass there, he can pass here, he can choose the best option, perfect pass, and this guy is already prepared, one touch, and inside. And again, nothing amazing, simple passing. What's the amazing thing here? The positions that the guys are taking. They are in really good positions, and it's, yeah, that's what makes it easier. If we provide more options, the player on the ball, we have an easier choice. This is another part, another concept inside um, inside stick to stick that is playing what you see. So always try to play what I'm seeing with my eyes, never play what I'm not seeing. If I have the ball, I cannot make a pass backwards if I didn't turn around. This I think is very important and I see very often players even turning with the ball to the blind side where they are not watching or passing the ball thinking there's somebody there. That's why we need to provide options for the player on the ball and we need to, when I have the ball, I have the responsibility to, to always play to where I'm seeing. I will show an example, this is Belgium, okay? If you can see the player on the ball and you have always what his sight is looking or what I think he's looking, so that's more or less the idea, okay? Player number one, let's go. 
path, what he's looking, okay, next one, you see, he's looking forward, that's the option, that path, he's looking sideways, he didn't choose, he turned around, okay, there's already a player going into a space, he gets the ball, and at this moment, he's looking to, to this side, there's nobody here, okay, we should try to have somebody, but okay, we cannot be everywhere on the field, so what is really nice that this guy, what he does, he protects the ball, turns his body around, now he sees his player coming, he play what he sees, player receiving, player moving into a space where this guy is looking, stick to stick, receive under pressure, okay, and then finishes, okay, on a, doesn't matter how it's finished, but that's the idea, always have an option to where I'm watching, so if I'm under pressure, I can always have an easy way out, and also always provide better options. Third principle, this one maybe will clash a bit with stick to stick, it's the, okay, I will go, I will go next, go forward, okay, this is when we want to play hockey, of course, we want to remember that, okay, this is a question that a coach always made to me, what's the first pass we need to look for, we have the ball, you are the center defender, where you need to look for, and of course, I think this question, everybody has done it before, so now we all know the first pass we need to look for is our center forward next to the goal, this doesn't mean we will do it. I think that if we check for this pass every time, we will find it once every 10 games if we are lucky. This is 99% of the time this is defended because every team, the first thing they will close is their, their center and that pass. But I still want to point out that this is, we need to look it and we need to have this philosophy. When we have the ball, I will look for that guy. Okay, maybe he's close, then I will look for other alternatives, okay, and I will keep stay keep passing the ball until I can find that pass to go to the goal, okay? So in this case, let's say I make a pass to a right defender, he gets the ball, first thing he does, look to the guy closer to the goal. If I can give it there, I want to go there. I don't want you to confuse this, that we need to, to try to crash players and go to a center, that's not the point, okay? It's always about checking and making a decision. It's open, I can do it, it's not open, I keep passing the ball. Sometimes maybe I will find the ball, I will find that pass in the first in the first option, I will have it, maybe I can make a high ball on the back of the defenders and I will find that player, sometimes maybe I will find it in the second pass, some, some, sometimes maybe it's 15 passes until I can go forward, but every time we need to know that is our objective and we should not forget this. Maybe in the outlet it's clear, but I have done several exercises where we are having uh, attacks inside the 25 and, and with young players I tell them, okay, what's the first pass you need to look for? And they always say, oh, outside to the right. No, no, look for a center forward. If he's covered, then of course we go outside, we enter on the outside, but the priority is going to the goal as fast and as safe as possible. Example, this is Spain, last World Cup. Okay, he gets the ball, for sure. That pass is not going to go through. There's a lot of people in between. We make one pass, this guy, as soon as he looks up, Okay, maybe that pass can go through, there's a good movement, receiving in the top of the circle and inside the goal, okay, two passes to, to score, as I said, it will not happen any, every time, it will happen very not enough from the outlet, but from all the other positions we should also remind that our priority is try to go to the goal. Now, this is the important part for me, the, the important thing is not to go forward every time, but to try to be able to go forward every time. What is the difference? To be able to go forward, I need to have open receiving, I need to be able to face forward, and then I will make a decision if I want to do it or not. Okay, that's what I mean by being able. Now, that's what I mean, the important is to have the option, sorry. So first of all, you need to play with pre-scanning. We said it before, if I'm already looking what's happening in front of me before I get the ball, I can create the space to receive in a position where I can make an open receiving and try to go forward. Receiving with our feet facing to opposite goal. Sorry, I'm talking before I show the screen. And also try to give offensive options. Try to give options that are already going forward. I will show a very simple example. Okay, so please let's focus on the guy that has the stick, the only player with the stick. So how we can apply this? Imagine this guy comes here and we pass the ball there. From this position, this is a perfect example of stick to stick. We pass the, stick to a, the ball to a stick of my teammate, but from there we cannot go forward because we are under pressure. So 
from things, this is why I say maybe this period crush a bit. From the stick to stick, we need to sometimes try to, to make a bit um, a better effort to try to be in a position where we can also go forward, receive on my stick, but at the same time be able to go forward. In order to do that, first of all, don't read, please. Eh? First of all, we need to understand where the pass can go through. Like I showed before, that's the angle where the pass could go in. Secondly, understand where is the space that I could get the ball. In this case, it's this diamond. I call this a box. Every time there's space between defenders, I call it a box. And now, coming to this position. Why? Because if I receive the ball here, I know I have space to go forward. This guy is a bit far away from me. And although this one is really close, if I make a good reception, I know he's going to be behind me and I'm going to protect the ball with my body. So if I get it, I'm going to be able to play forward and this guy, if I do my work properly, he should not be able to touch that ball. Okay, now we will look at it in a video example. Video example. This is England playing against Australia. Okay, so please pay attention to this guy. He's between two Australian guys. And if you want, that's a whole box. Let's check the video. Okay, first of all, before going forward, look at this moment. If you can see with detail his face, I'm not sure. He's turning, he's looking forward. That's the press scanning moment. Okay, he's looking forward before receiving the ball. Now, he's looking at the ball. Okay, he's understanding what space he has to receive. That's the box. And he's understanding where the pass could go through. So, look at him. He's, he's going closer to this guy, knowing that he can protect the ball from him and creating a space to go forward. Look at this point, he's looking over his shoulder to look if he's coming. When he sees he's coming, he receives, puts his body in between, and with a good coverage, it's really hard that this guy can get the ball. And now he has all this space to be able to go forward. What he chose? To play sideways. And I love this example because that's exactly the point. As we said in the first slide, the idea is to have the possibility to go forward, then it's the player's decision. He can choose to go forward, he can choose to go sideways, he can choose to pass backwards. But he has the possibility. His technical part allowed him to go forward. Okay? Pass sideways. We look at it from another angle, look at this again. Okay? That's the space involved. He's receiving the ball, he's putting his body in between, goes forward, he can pass into a circle but he tries, he decides not to, and he makes the pass sideways. Now at the same time, let's look for something, another detail from this clip that I like. Look at this guy, he's the one receiving the ball on the line afterwards. He's coming from the circle to give a, another option. Why? There's too many people in the circle, we don't need so many options in the same place. He's providing a different option. And this is exactly what we are talking about, that Sergio was mentioning in the chat, know how to play without the ball. Okay, if everybody would be in the same place, this guy at this point would have no option because he thinks this is not a good option. I'm not judging that, but this guy that moved before is creating an easy pass. Another example, this is Australia. Open receiving. Okay, now, as usual, let's see what he did to be able to receive open. Okay, what normally would happen for me Normally, if I, if I try to think this situation in my team, I, I think they would pass the ball, he would receive here under pressure and we had to pass back. I think 90% of the teams would do that. Okay, but look how, first of all, this guy makes just three steps, one, two, three steps, and now he can receive forward. Okay, and at the same time, the player on the ball, how he's moving forward with the ball while opening that angle a bit better, knowing He's going to pass to this guy. Receiving, and after that, what's going to happen? He's open receiving. He's Australian. He's going to go forward for sure. You are going to be in trouble if you allow to, if you allow an Australian player to receive the ball there facing forward. So now on is domino effect. Okay, you have superiority, 2v1 forward. Okay, 2v1 number one. This guy receives going forward as again. You have a 3v1 outside because this guy was looking at the ball, not looking his player. One player here, one player there. Okay, let's continue. 2v1, receiving here. This is also a 2v1, it's going towards the goal because it's always in direction to the goal. 2v1 inside the circle and we end up with the ball in the circle that unfortunately didn't finish in a goal. I think it would have been an amazing goal, 
Why, in my opinion, didn't finish in a goal? This guy, his body is not for open receiving. Why? Open receiving is always pointing towards the goal. So if the pass is from here, here, he should be with his feet pointing to the goal. When he receives the ball, it's not so good, his position, so then he still needs to turn around. Of course, it's, it's easy to watch it in the video. If I'm that player, I wouldn't be able to do it. But it's just to try to express my opinion to all of you so we know what you are talking about, okay? Unfortunately, no goal, but still a great example. One more. This is Holland in the last World Cup. Okay, receive forward, go forward, look for his teammate, two passes to a center forward, and then they have an attacking situation. Now, all the things that happened that this guy did to be able to go forward, that when you look at it, it looks really easy. Okay, he stopped the ball, he ran forward. Okay, let's see. First of all, here, Billy Bakker going to your side, so he's moving this guy, opening more space to him. Look how he's checking all the space where he can receive the ball. So first of all is which position he's going to take. Secondly, pre-scanning, look at this point, exactly, he's looking forward, okay? As we said, the moment where you turn your neck is when you're looking what's in front of you to create the next situation. This is the angle where the pass can go through, so he's in a good position where the ball can go stick to stick. And now, as soon as he receives, same again, player from behind, if you cover with your body, he cannot touch the ball, and you're ready to go forward. Okay, this is maybe from all the principles, the one that is technically a bit harder, but that's why I emphasize much more on the understanding than on the technique itself. For me, it's understanding the space, understanding where you have to be standing, and that's going to make it much more easier for the technical part. Oh, sorry, one more example. This is from our U19, okay, last season. It's a nice example I really like. I record every match with the GoPro. It's not the best quality, but it's still useful. So this is a box, this is a guy receiving the ball, look how he's receiving, putting his body and trying to go forward. Okay, we have worked a lot on these kind of things, a lot. The thing is the pass is pushing him to come to this side, but normally I think that in most situations this guy would have just stopped the ball with his backhand and if he does that, this guy could put pressure. But he's moving his feet, moving his feet, moving his feet, receiving on the face of the stick and now as soon as he's receiving, as we said before, this guy is putting pressure from behind, but he's covering with the body, so that guy cannot get the ball, and he's able to play forward. Okay, what happened next is not the important part for this principle itself, it's just about being able to do it. Next principle, attack the left foot. Please, questions, something, I'm talking like crazy here, a lot of information together, so stop me whenever you want. Also, Chicha, if you are there and you want to add something, please do it. Okay. Yes. If not, uh, I will continue. Uh, Javier. Yeah, Chiche, please. Yes, I need a drink, please. Is it me? Okay. Yes, perfect. It's a simple, simple question, maybe not only for you, for the participants. I, <coughs> what do you think that is uh, the main limiting factor for playing this system? I mean, this system involves the principles that Javier are talking about. Which is the, the more limiting factor if you think in your team, suppose that you have to play this way, what is, whether you predict that your limiting factor will be in this style? That, that's the question. It's a general question also. It's a question also for you, Javier, because you are using this system or this pattern. Maybe you know which is the more difficult things. But let's the, the think that if we have a uh, a response from the participant first, please. Yes, for sure. People are shy, I think. We have a, yeah. Do we have a question for the participant? Okay, we have some answers in the chat already. You're lucky you can read, I can't read without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we have Patricia saying, Strong basic skills, that for sure, that's what I agree mostly. We have SBU saying, I think you need to develop a technical level, the basic for proper pass and receive. And we have Dave Cox, hello Dave, the technical abilities of the players you have. Yeah, okay, so I, I agree totally. Um, I think that 
many times we have the discussion if the principal should be guided by, by the technical, the techniques our team have or the level our team has. I do agree with that because, of course, you cannot make really complex principles if your players don't have the, prop, the, the adequate technique. I do think at least the principles I choose um, can be done by any level of team with decent passing and receiving skills. I, I, I don't have a principle showing aerial skills or something like that. Of course, if I have it, I'm happy to use it. But I think that this, most of these principles are are very down to earth, let's say, that most teams can do it. And I, I like to start with something simple and from there go to from simple to complex. I don't know, Chicha, if you agree. Yeah, oh, I agree. No? I, I agree with the participant because maybe the level of the team in terms of technique of passing or receiving skill are not so so strong. So we have a we, we have a general idea about the the problems or the coaches that we have on as the participants because of the technique. So let's go to the top level. Javier, your problem. What do you think that is the more difficult problem for you, assuming that you have a team, a good technique, enough technique to play the system and about the passing and receiving? Okay, which the is the, an additional have, problem that you detect? Yeah, the problem I have is that although players technically, most of them in this level are amazing, uh, Concept-wise, they're not well prepared because they were taught all their life how to do amazing skills, but they were not taught how to use them with concepts. So now it's a really tough job to work on the game understanding and the decision making and all these kind of things, even though maybe you have players that technically are amazing. Yeah, well, uh, I assume that this will will be your your response. You know that's generally speaking, is decision making because if they don't have a good concept, you can take a good decision. They can take a good decision, of course. So that that is only a, a contribution, maybe or a comment for the other participants that if you don't have enough skill in terms of basic skill passing and receiving, very difficult to play with this speed at uh, with this. Uh, that you need for playing the system. So, which is the conclusion? Little conclusion, maybe we have to think teaching hockey or training hockey for concept and also for exercises. But if you don't put that, a concept within the exercise, that will happen now. Javier said, you know, amazing technique, amazing uh, passing and receiving, but what about the concept? So, our responsibility maybe as coaches have to teach players by concept through the exercises. Okay. okay. I really the uh, the true, but it is is only my opinion. Okay. Thank you, Javier. No, thank you, Chiche. Of course, I agree a hundred percent. And I think sometimes as coaches we try to focus on doing a lot of skills all the time, new things, and okay, we have this saying we like to use a lot, less is more, so try to focus on less things, the basics, and really, really focus to do that perfectly. Once you have that covered, maybe then you can move to other skills, but I think that you can have maybe a player that hits backhand amazing and has the best 3D skills, if he doesn't know how to stop the ball and how to pass it, he won't be able to play like that. So. Yeah, in, in, in the end, our conclusion, and we say it all the time, and I think we need to repeat it, work more on the basics, focus on that. That's what's really important for the game uh, and not the, the fancy skills, let's say. Okay, what's, do you have, Javier, a, a recommendation for improving, in your case, I'm talking about your case, for improving the concept and decision-making? Any, any suggestion for, for us? Yes, actually, I have a good example. Last year, I coached the U19, this video you were last watching, and it was a, a team full of players with amazing skill, but no concept whatsoever. So the first thing I did was a lot of trainings, really, they, they hate me at first, so the part of enjoy the game, is, it was a bit hard. It was a lot, of two, two, a lot of possession games with two touches, open receiving, and for me, that's why I like the principles, because I think that 
when you work on principle, you can work it at any level. Fast stick to stick, you can do it at any level. Maybe you would change the exercise for a lower for a lower level that you're going to put maybe more space, maybe less defenders, but you will can still work on the idea of passing to stick to stick. The ability to go forward, the same. Maybe you're going to play with less numbers, with more space, slower, with more time, but you can do it at any level. And this is what I really enjoy of the principles. I, I have done it with the first team, to national level in Belgium, and also done it with U14, maybe the third level team. The principle is the same. Then how you design the training that is adequate for that level will be different. But I think that this kind of, of, of thing help also to have a common language. As I said before, we all know we want to play stick to stick. We create the options to play stick to stick. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you, TJ. Okay, I will continue. Okay, sorry, I have a message in the chat from Diego. He's asking uh, when we are talking about the go forward principle, how you balance your attack if you have one or two players with yellow card. I think it's a really good question. Um, and this is a bit what I forgot to say that I wanted to say. The stick to stick for me, when we talk about stick to stick, we talk about possession, passing the ball simple without losing it. When we talk about go forward, we talk usually about taking a bit more risk in order to try to attack. So I think these two principles are a bit in a balance. And there are moments of the game where we are going to focus much more on stick to stick because we need to have the ball, maybe because we are winning and we want to keep possession, maybe because we are playing really bad at this moment and we say, okay, let's get the ball to have confidence again. And maybe in other moments we really need to, to, to go to be more aggressive so we will focus a bit more on going forward. Maybe we are losing, maybe they have a card and we have more numbers. Or maybe just the moment of the game, we are feeling really good and we feel like going forward. This is something very important. Uh, I think that if I would be with one or two players down, I would just try to play stick to stick. I would try to keep the ball, not take silly risks. And if I go forward, it's going to be to try to run to the space and keep the ball in the space maybe until my teammates can come back in. I think it's really important to understand these kind of things where we are managing the game, when we are managing the tempo and the momentum. Um, that's, that's why I like these two principles. Eh? When I want to play more possession, I want to play safe, more stick to stick. When I, I need to take more risk, more go forward. It's a balance between one or the other. So st thank you, Diego, for the question. I really liked it. Next principle, guys, is going to be attack the left foot. Uh, maybe I think right now I, we are actually redesigning our principles. We are organizing them again, attack the left foot. Uh, I, it's not that big, but I put it as a principle because in the youth, I have to use it all the time. I have to remind it all the time. And why is this? First of all, normally, uh, for the players on the ball, of course, we know that going to our right or the left foot of the defender, if I have a guy in front of me, is our strong side and, of course, is his weak side. But normally, for a player attacking forward, the easy is to go to his left because the stick itself makes you go to your left. So we need to work a lot of winning their left foot. I will show an example. This is in half class. Okay, they start. This is just the start of the match. Already, first pass. And this is what I mean when we understand each other. This position is already in the left foot of the defender. This guy is already looking for that option. Okay, so left foot receiving the ball, 1v1 duel, where left foot of the defender, bye bye. And the last pass, pass to the left foot of the defender into the space, is already receiving on the left foot of the defender. And he's taking a shot on goal that is not a goal, but it's not the point. And also, I want you to go again through a last pass look at this guy this is actually michael he's an argentinian player look how he's running to the inside he realizes he's going to get close turns around double movement and pass to the left foot of the defender okay so just in the first clip of the match that this is 10 seconds you can easily see the intention of this team that is to go forward and to look of the left foot of the defenders another example from australia Okay, then we will look at it in slow motion. Okay, I will put it slowly anyway. No, actually, the, the replay. Don't worry about this one. Okay, the attack on the right finishes on a goal. But also look, okay, first pass, left foot of the defender. Second pass, left foot of the defender. Receiving and already beating the left foot of the defender. Getting into the circle. And again, keep going, keep going. Now, backhand of the defender, pass it there. 
and the pass back, and it finishes in a really, really good goal. Another clip from the same match, actually. Recovery after loss. Skip, skip. We'll watch the replay, don't worry. Okay, that's a horrible shot. Finishes in a goal. Doesn't really matter. Let's go through the action again. Okay, look at this guy. Okay, and this is what when I say that the skills have to be properly used. Okay, he's doing a pull left to right, the more, more basic one, but the important is at what speed he's doing it, at what moment, and how he's using it, okay? He fakes a bit to go to the right there, bye-bye. Okay, the defender was not in his best moment, I think. Next action, he's going, and again, look at this guy, eh? Look how far is the left foot, and again, pull backwards, pull really, really long pull back, win the left foot, he's gone, okay? So also to show that this, that I try to work it in the U12s, Australia is also doing it in the World Cup, and they are already also doing it in, in the half class. One more. This is Orange Road. Okay, okay, don't, don't worry about this part. They are already recovering the ball. So as soon as they recover, look at this. Okay, this guy, even before the recovery, he was already expecting the, the counter-attack. So he didn't even defend. He's ready to receive in the left in the left foot. Pass to the left foot, pass back. And this guy already starts sprinting. This one sprints to the left foot of this defender. Okay, you see? Pass on the left foot. Remember this guy, he was the one that started. Stansel, he started the play. Okay, runs into the space and runs where? To the left foot of the defender. And he gets the ball in the circle. Again, simple things that can be useful at any level. So as I was saying before, in the youth it's really hard to go to a left foot of the defenders. Why? Because we are we usually don't work on carrying the ball properly. Okay, so if you see a, well, this is Jerome Herzberger, if you look at him, how he's carrying the ball, he's able to carry the ball with the face looking forward. Okay, this is looks easy, but it's not. Uh, when we start playing, I see a lot of players that when they carry the ball, they are just looking at the ground, bending their back. No, you need to get your body lower, bend your knees, and try to be able to dribble while facing forward. This is a re really nice example. And also, that left elbow up is going to make that he can go to the right side. If that left elbow is touching his body, he's going to go to his left for sure, and that is what happens most of the time with the youth players, okay? So when you work, please pay attention a lot on having that left elbow up when dribbling. This is an example. This is a U14 girls I coached last year also. Uh, okay, the quality is really bad because it's the GoPro, but still you can see the idea. I want you to look at this girl. She's running with the ball, how she's carrying the ball, even though she's running right to left. Now we'll see the replay, don't worry. Okay, it doesn't matter how the action finished. I want you to see how she's carrying the ball. Look at this, she's carrying, running from right to left, that's okay, but she's left elbow outside the body. Her face is up, this girl is only 11 or 12 years old. It's really amazing to find a girl for me running with the ball like this. But she's always looking to pass on her right foot, looking to pass to the left foot of the defender. Look how she's carrying, head up, head up, head up, elbow outside all the time, okay? So these are the things that we need to work more, and this is what I mean and most people said it in the, on the chat, work on the basics. This is basic. Run with the ball properly, and we don't do it enough. Okay? Hey, uh, Javi? Example? Yes, please. I have a question. Um, we, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a bit new. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, I have a question about... Um, you're speaking about basics. Uh, last year I had an instructor uh, course uh, with the Belgian Federation and we were also speaking about basics. What includes for you basics? It's it's very general, but what does it mean for you in, in, in speaking about details? Is it only uh, stopping receiving passing or is it also dribbling? Uh, like in, for in, the, in this example, with, uh, with this dribble. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I love that question. Um, yeah, the other day I had a meeting actually because I, I'm in charge of the youth in Leuven, but more from U14 uh, forward. The youngest, there's another coordinator, and we had a meeting and he asked me, okay, how do you need the players to get to U14? With what kind of techniques? And this is what we talked eh? running with the ball properly, number one, okay, being able to run with the ball in a good position. Uh, 
body posture, as they are saying somebody, I don't know the name there, is of course, a passing the ball, that for me, when we say passing is, okay, you are from Belgium. In Belgium, they love to make slaps, they love it. But for me, they are not enough better than not how to push the ball on the run. Okay, so pushing on the run, pushing on the right foot, is the, is the technique you use the most. The other day I was in a, in a really nice uh, uh, yeah, set webinar by a guy named Facundo Quiroga. He was really good. He, he showed all the techniques in what percentage were used in a tournament. And push was number one by far, okay? This doesn't mean we don't need to work on the others, but we need to know which to focus. We need our players that they can push the ball perfectly on the run or uh, I, I don't know how to call it, this small push hit, like the indoor push, these two skills are the number one for me, and we don't work on them enough, okay? We work on that flat, we work on that hit, we work on that aerial ball, we work on that backhand, okay? We can do that when they have mastered the push, the push on the run, and running properly with the ball, and receiving, of course. For me, that's the basic, eh? The end, pulling left to right, having good wrist, let's say, uh, stick work is very important also, um, of course, but this is what we don't have to forget that the basic to be able to do all these principles is running properly with the ball, passing properly on the run, pushing, pushing 100% and receiving skills. Okay, okay. okay, thank you very much. No worries. Okay, we see this example. This is Argentina in the semi final of Rio. Okay, it's against Germany. I really remember this goal. It was a very happy moment for all the Argentinian people. Sorry for the rest. Okay, but let's look at, at the technique. It's a 2v1, it's on the left foot of the defender, and it's an amazing goal. Play the superiority, all the concepts we've seen. First of all, look how he's carrying the ball. The ball is outside his right foot. Look at his left elbow outside. Look at his face looking forward. He keeps running, and look how he's passing the ball. Pushed on the right foot, okay? How much time we have spent working on this technique? Think it for yourself, eh? We need to work it much more for sure. Perfect pass, perfect receiving, open receiving to go forward, put the ball in front, and a good finish. Next principle, wide and deep, okay? Yeah, the order is a bit tricky, eh? Maybe we should have started with this one because to do everything we've done before, we need to be wide and deep, but okay, it's more a global one. So let's see that this picture, I see I see this a lot of times in most games, all the players trying to get the ball. At least in Argentina, in Argentina we are people that we want to have the ball in your stick, so all our movements are towards the ball, give it to my stick. I don't know why I'm going to next, but give it to my stick. No, that's not the way to play top level hockey. What we need to try to do is make the space as bigger as possible. How we are going to do it, first of all, having deep options, okay, and having wide options. Why? Just by taking these positions, we are going to make their defenders stretch. We are going to have much more playing area, okay? And first of all, if this guy can get the ball, of course, it's good to play a superiority for a transfer, to play the space, so we can play wide to then go deep. But at the same time, if we are wide, we are going to make all the spaces, all the channels inside bigger, so we are going to have more chances of playing passes inside, okay? Example. This is the same clip we saw before for play forward, but we are going to focus on the second action now. Look at this. When he carries the ball forward, he's able to pass the ball to a center forward. Now, the usual, I, don't, I like to see why things happen. So let's go through it again. Okay, I don't care about this part. Oh, I don't think it has the animation. Okay, sorry, should have the animation. I make a mistake with the video I chose, so I will have to show it. Look at this moment exactly. First of all, when they have the ball, you have this guy here, this guy here, defenders inside. When he starts running, look at the behavior of those two, how they go open. Okay, and now you have this diamond, two players really wide, allowing the long deep pass. Why? He's, out, he's wide, so these two guys are coming with him. He's wide, so these two guys are coming with him. And that's what's opening that deep pass in the center. Okay? That's why it's important to be wide, to be able to play deep. Belgium example, this is in the Pro League against Australia, okay? In this moment, if you want to play deep, these guys are too close together, you have defenders, so look at the movement these guys are doing to be able to create that space, to make it bigger, that angle, for the deep guy to receive the ball, okay? Look at it. They both change direction, different positions, open the path, and then we are able to find that deep player. Sorry. 
And let's look at it one more time. Let's look at from that perspective of this guy. He's deep. It's important that we're, when you are deep, I didn't like so much the previous example because he was going to double too soon. It's important to stay deep. Be patient until it's the perfect moment to go to look for the ball. Because if you go early, you will bring the defenders with you. Okay? So look at this guy, follow him. He's waiting, he's waiting. They open the space. Now he sees a space. Now there's a change of speed and he's able to receive. And something important to mention, okay, the two guys that create the space, the one that is outside here and this one, if they don't do that, this guy cannot receive. So this guy, we should always encourage it as coaches. Because imagine this guy scores, everybody would be, oh, amazing pass, amazing shot. But we would not be checking on the guys that are allowing this to happen. And these guys are making a hard work, not only for allowing the ball, but also because when he's shooting, look, you have one guy getting for the rebound, the other guy running for the rebound as well. Okay, And these are the, the things that make a difference, this kind of effort. Okay? Next one. One more from Belgium. Okay. They have all their defense really wide. They are using all the width of the pitch. Now, this guy receives the ball. And again, you see, he has the two guys wide, one deep and one behind. That's the guard. But you see, as this guy is here, that defender is with him. As this guy is here, that defender is with him. And that is what is allowing all this big channel to pass forward. Okay. So now, Yes, we can pass to a player inside the circle and we can take a shot on goal. That was almost a goal. But again, we need to thank the guys that are being wide to allow this possibility. Okay, a really bad quality example. Again, my GoPro with Okay, we have the ball here. Okay, we are playing under pressure. High ball. Okay, we get the hit because they were not five, but look. What was the principle number one? Play the superiority. All this side full of players from their team. On the opposite side, we have more numbers. And also we have players wide and players deep. This is a really good example. Okay. First play wide to then be able to play deep. Look at this. One pass. Two passes. We get it in the baseline. Okay. And we have two guys already in the circle. That is a really big effort also. And unfortunately, we missed the goal. Okay. But that doesn't mean that the principle was not carried out properly. Okay, it was a really good idea. It was a really good decision. We just missed the technical part. As a coach, we need to encourage this. Okay, maybe we can work on how to finish it properly or what you can do better. But that concept is perfect. Next principle: attack the space. Okay. If we, are, if we are doing wide and deep properly, we will create a lot of space. Now we need to know how to use that space. So one of the most common mistakes, I say it in Argentina, for sure that I know, is running towards the defender, okay? Going to the defender, trying to dribble in the defender's feet or leading towards defender. The idea is to go always to the space when we have the ball and when we don't have the ball as well, okay? So let's see the two examples. First of all, Without the ball, we need to make leads into the empty spaces, okay? That's a very simple example. That's the space. Try to get the ball in the space. Now, when we have the ball, I also use this principle, okay? And to go to the space is to play a 1v1 outside the defender's reach, okay? Try to go a 1v1 into a space so the defender cannot even touch you. That's the most important. And this is when I say to use our skills effectively, okay? I don't want to use my skill to dribble through this guy's legs that is going to be, uh, maybe he kicks it and it's over and I get a, a free hit and it's nothing, but try to use the space and, and the skis use them far away from the player so he cannot even touch me, okay? Example, Germany, London Olympics. Look at this guy, he's defending inside the circle, a lot of pressure, okay? They recover the ball here and at this moment where they clean, let's say the play, they are ready to face forward you have three guys that are already running forward from the counter, okay? They were all defending inside their circle and they start speeding up. But where? They are not, this is what I say, imagine this is your team, you have the ball here and you have all your players in this position. In 90% of the teams, I think they would all be going to this space, trying to fight there for the ball with the defenders. They run one here, one runs over there, and this one is already running into the circle, okay? That's important, go to the space. So pass number one to this space, okay? I put it slowly so you can watch it. 
pass number two to a second space. And look at this guy, eh? he was the one defending in the penalty spot. He keeps going, he keeps going. This one is already joining again. Okay. So, from a play that was defending inside the circle, they make a counter running to the space. Nobody had to dribble, nobody had to do anything weird. Run to the space, a really good precise pass to a stick of the teammate, and you have an amazing goal. Some more examples. This is a really good one. This is Arthur Van Doren, one of the formidable players in the world. So, this is what I was saying. When you want to dribble around the guy, do it outside the reach okay so let's say that red zone is the reach where he can reach with his stick when he could touch the ball try to do it without going through that part okay let's look at it so he's coming this way he's pulling the ball you see that's exactly what i mean eh? look how he's pulling the ball where he's pulling it really far away he's coming here he's protecting on his back so that guy cannot touch the ball and he's looking over his shoulder eh? when he sees he's coming okay this is a moment protect the ball go to the other side speed up, leave him behind, and although they are the ball is in the red zone, he has his body in between, so the guy doesn't have a chance, okay, and from a situation over there, under pressure on a 1v1, he created a superiority, he played forward, and it's an amazing goal, let's go through this action again, okay, you see, pull back, under pressure, put your body in between, protect the ball, protect the ball, I call this feeling. You feel he's coming on your left side, so you need you need to go to your right side, go to the space, and once you're able to turn, speed up and leave him behind. This is what for me uh, how to play a perfect one v one without risking the ball, eliminating the player because he's elim eliminated. Yeah, I think it is amazing. This is top hockey. Another example, a different one. Okay, the guy getting the ball right now. That's Christopher Ruhl, he's one of the fastest players uh, in hockey. So look what he's doing, okay? He received the ball with space. Poor the guy from Malaysia, I would never like to have a 1v1 against Ruhl with this space. But look how Ruhl plays it. Let's go to that, okay? I put in slow motion so you can look at it. So he's going towards the player right now, but knowing where is the space. So there he looks at him a bit, so this guy has to move his feet. Now he's facing at him, bye bye. Speed up, go into space. And finish it. Let's look at it from another angle. Okay, let's see. You see, going to a space. Now he looks at the defender at this moment, so the defender thinks he's going for the small 1v1. Bye bye. Pull the ball, go into the space, speed up, and he's gone. Really nice example. Okay, a couple more. This is Belgium. These are examples of going in between players, okay? This is also attacking the space, maybe a bit more risky because it's in places with less space, but still eh? going between defenders, going between defenders, always trying not to touch the ball, between defenders, okay? That's exactly my point. He's not going to where the defender is, he's not trying to make a 3D skill in between the legs, he's going always in between, trying to cut the lines. One more. Ireland against Australia, look at this guy, you see, you have red zone here, red zone here, try to escape in between, they are there, just in between, speed up, excellent, now you have a space, so this is a combination of both examples, running into a space and also leading into the space, look at this guy, he identified the space, okay, at this moment receiving the space and an amazing goal uh, against Australia, that is not nothing easy. I really like this example, look at this one again, just in between, just in between, so they cannot reach it, okay, look at the following, going into the space, really nice goal, a lot of concepts, a lot of technique in this one as well, but a very good one. And one more, one more example of this one, okay, I really like this one because this is uh, going into a space leading and breaking the line of the defenders, again, if, if this would be a normal player, he would try to receive the ball going towards the ball there, what he does is now, as he's on the same line as the defender, goes forward, okay? And also turn his body around. If you see him right now, he's with his body ready to go to receive open, to go forward, open receiving, defender eliminated, and we can go forward. Nice example, a combination of many principles as well. Last principle in attack. This one is called enhance the chance, okay? What's the idea of this? 
At least in Argentina, I know we have a lot of problems scoring goals. In women, especially, it's hard to create players that can uh, score goals. Okay. Now, the idea of this video is not to say, okay, we are going to score goals, but it's, it's to say we are going to try to make our chances of scoring much bigger. So, in order to, to do that, first we need to know how we score goals, from where do goals come from. Okay. This is good when we do stats, when we do video. It's always to know if we are training the correct things. I always say the same example. A player go into a top of a circle and hitting on goal, that is the most normal training. How many times in a match you have that situation? We need to work it, yes. But how? We need to work on the tipping, we need to work on the rebounds. These things are the ones that score more goals, eh? and we don't do it. I will continue. Yes, Sergio, exactly. Elevate the percentage. Getting his scoring position for me is number one. 70% of the field goals are scoring the seven meter zone. That's the zone, let's say, from the two first lines, we have an image, and the penalty spot, that small area around the goal, 70% of the field goals in hockey are scored from there. So when we are training, just hitting from the top of the circle, it's not going to be our, our highest chance of scoring. If we work on hitting from there and somebody putting the stick in the seven meter zone, or if we work on hitting from there and somebody ready for the rebound in the seven meter zone, then it's going to be much more real. Putting players in a second post every time, always. And yeah, this for me, the mental part of always be expecting the ball. How many times you have a player in the circle that is surprised by a ball? If you're in the circle, you need to think every time. If a teammate hitting, you need to think he will miss it and it will come to you. If a, if a teammate is hitting on goal and the ball goes to a goal, you need to be thinking that there's going to be a rebound and it's going to come to you. The ball cannot surprise you. The body posture, of course, be ready when the ball comes to you, okay? Okay, the, the second post for sure, sometimes for me a second post is maybe a better option passing to a second post than scoring, but also many other times I will shoot and if I miss, that guy will have to put it in. That's why we call it widening the goal, okay? So this is my normal shot, these are my chances. If I have a pain in the second post, I could also hit and miss the goal in that line and he could fix it. And the other thing I like to say about the second post is that sometimes we are we think second post is standing outside the goal, but for me second post I prefer to have the player on the line of the second post, but a bit closer to the ball, maybe in the penalty spot, or almost there. For sure from the penalty spot to the opposite side, but from here you have much more chances of scoring than if you are outside the goal. If I have two people, for sure I would like to have one here and one here, because if everybody misses, this guy will put it in. But for T pins, I would much rather use this position or even a movement from here to there to anticipate the defenders. Video, let's go. Okay, recovery from Netherlands. Okay, that's the seven meter zone I was saying. We need people there. Okay, I will go slowly, sorry. I forget sometimes it's slow. Hit on goal, T pin and goal. Now, what's the important for me? Let's go back to when they recover the ball. As usual, let's understand why this is happening. Okay, so this guy here, Pruiser, is the one in the penalty spot that doesn't touch the ball, but he was ready to, to touch. Of course, he doesn't center forward, that's his job. But this is the guy scoring the goal. Eh? If you see my pointer, the one that has the little, little red triangle, he's starting from here. Look, when they recover the ball, how he starts sprinting immediately to go to the attack. Right now, he's not even given a, a, an option. He keeps running to the post. Eh? And at the moment when they are ready to hit, look where he's standing. Okay, so this is what I mean. If we want to maximize our chances of scoring a goal, we need to have guys like this that make this effort when you are recovering the ball and you are not sure if it's going to be a, a really an attack. He's going to a second post. He's running there, okay? And maybe he doesn't get the ball, but he's making the effort. And if he doesn't get it, he made the effort, he will get a sub and his teammate who comes in has to do it again, okay? Hit from the top of the circle with two players in a seven meter zone, we can tip in or we can get the rebound, but we have a lot of chances, okay? That's why, that's why my first point was get in scoring positions. Another example, also Netherlands, again, really similar, recovery, okay? Center forward in a good position, follow him, follow him, follow him. Other post, okay, I can shoot, or I can pass. What I think is better chance? Passing. Okay, good idea. But again, let's follow this guy. Look at him when we recover. First of all, he's coming. 
from the penalty spot to the right to the opposite side is a good option. As soon as he realizes the ball is coming here, look how he turned his body around. Okay. Ah, the, the video stopped. Okay, we can go back. So look at him at this point. He's on this side. When the pass is coming, he moves his body around, moves his body around, and look at where he is right now. On the penalty spot with his body open to be able to tip in going forward. One more example, Australia. Okay, again, he could shoot on goal. He thinks it's a better option to pass to a teammate, and the teammate puts it in. Now, where is the teammate coming from? This guy here, he's the one scoring the goal. Okay, so follow him, please. He starts running, he starts running, he starts running. At this point, he's getting the ball and he's here. Again, eh? if it would be your team, how many players, instead of saying, ah, okay, he got it, he's going to shoot, they are winning 5-0, eh? and he's going a really, really hard run to try to get to, look at, he's here, he has to go to a second post, follow him, go to a second post, go to a second post, move the body, and give that option, okay? These kind of efforts are the ones that make the difference between scoring a goal or not scoring it. This one, we saw it already. This is the attack from rule, but let's, let's look at the second part. Okay, I will go fast through this, don't worry. Okay, here. We are here. This is, we said, the other chance of playing the second post. If you miss your shot on goal, okay, if you miss it, you must have a teammate who will fix it. Okay, that ball was going out, but Milka was on the second post, just putting the stick there, fix it, put it in. Okay, another camera. Okay, second post, stick on the ground, two hands, excellent. Okay, too many examples, let's keep going. This is my last principle in attacking, okay? This is attack, attack as a team, for me it's attack as a block, attack together, um, and it's my last because it's also already starting to think about the possible defense, it's about the prevention of uh, the counter control, I call it, okay? So the idea is that when we attack, we need to be always together, okay? The defenders need to be close because if we are too far, if we are in this situation and we lose the ball, all this space is space for their team to run forward in a counter-attack. So we must have a guard, I call a guard, the player that is right behind the ball. We always need a guy close to a ball behind it for two reasons. To be an option to pass back, number one, and if we lose it, he will be the first one to put pressure. The lines together, okay, and this is what I mean, sometimes a bit uh, weird to hear. When we attack, we ask our player to be far away, to be deep, but the players that come from behind need to be much closer, okay? So there is no space for a counter-attack. And what I ask to my teams is at least to have a diamond, at least to have four players in this shape. It's not the same as having four guys in a line. We need this diamond because, in my opinion, for many reasons, that is not for today, Having a demo is going to be a, a structure decent enough to try to delay a counter-attack, okay? We can go through it another day, but this is what I want to have when we are attacking. Diamond, guard, and lines close together, okay? So it's really important. I'm the first one when we are attacking that I start yelling to our defenders, go up, go up, don't stay behind, rest when you are closer to the ball, don't rest 20 meters, uh, 50 meters away. Example, this is the, our, our first team last year, okay? This is a bad example to start with, okay? You can already see, we all have the ball. Look at these guys. Okay, this is really bad, okay? So let's look at it. We lose the ball. You see all the space? This is what we don't want. This guy should be forward. There should be a, a, a guy closing the diamond here because he should be the one cutting this space so we don't have so much space. Now we lose the ball, we have no structure, and look at this. These guys are able to get the ball here the closer defender is 15 meters away, they are able to run forward, now we are in trouble. Eh? When they are able to run forward with space in a counter-attack, it's really hard to stop it. Okay, it's a four against three, they have more numbers. Unfortunately, okay, the goalkeeper made a really good save and it's not a goal, but for sure it's a really, really bad counter-control from our side. And what I mean the counter-control for me is not in order to defend the, 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 the counter properly. For me, so we don't even have a counter-attack. So we stop it before it starts. Okay, so let's go this one, same game. Another example, much better one. Okay, we have the ball, we are attacking in the same side, same idea. We lose it right now, okay? 
We lose it, we have, this would be our guard, a guy that is behind the ball, ready to be in front, so this guy cannot speed up, and our diamond behind, ready to fix any mistake. So, objective of the guard, trying to take them to the outside, make them slow down, pass outside, we have our diamond ready behind to put pressure, we put pressure, we recover the ball, and we have it again, okay? Uh, this doesn't mean every time we have a diamond, we will, we will win every counter-attack, um, but I think we will have much more chances, okay? So we need to work it a lot. And this is part of the attacking game, eh? The counter control is part of our offensive phase. So, guys, um, um, we are going to go through a small summary, okay? When we're attacking, these are all the principles we saw today. Let's go through them. Play the superiority, go forward, stick to stick, wide and deep, attack the left foot, attack the space, enhance the chance, maximize the chance, how you want it, and attack as a team. So this is when we are attacking, when we lose the ball, okay, this is not for you, but I will just name them. We have only one principle, that is immediate pressure. We try to put pressure as soon as we lose it. You could actually see it in the last clip. If we go to the defense stage, okay, we only have three principles. We are working on adding more, but these for me are the basics one. This is protect the center. This is keep your duel. Don't lose your 1v1. And this is defend outside the circle. These are the three ones that we work more. When we recover, we have our offensive transition. And at this stage, I don't have special principles. For me, are the same as when we attack. Just we put more emphasis on one or the other. We try to play wide and deep. We try to play the superiority. We try to go forward. And we attack the space. Much more of that. But there are no special principles for the transition itself. Okay, so this is a summary. Okay, in this image, we summarize how we want our teams to play. And this is how I started. I want to have a common language for everybody. So even if a player from U16 moves to U19, the coach should be able to explain the same things. That's the idea of having principles for a for whole club, let's say. So to finish, guys, okay, that's it. Thank you very much, all of you, for your time, for staying here for Hi a long here. one. I know it was a lot of information. That's, um, that's my details. If you would like to, to ask something after, I'm always open. And if you have any question, please, now it's the moment. Javier, can you hear me, please? Yes, perfect. Javier. I don't know who's talking, but yes. Diego, this is Diego Javier. Hello, Diego, how are you? Good, wonderful. Uh, I have one more question. Hey, yes, please. When, when do you recommend an air pass or flick? In what situation? Okay. Um, for me, uh, if you remember the first part of go forward, our first option when we have a ball is to try to play to our center forward, let's say. So I always play center defender and I have a really long aerial ball. So as soon as we recover the ball, there was a free hit that we recover position in our 25, for example. My first goal was to look for a center forward if I could put a high ball on top of all the defenders, for example. That's number one, yeah. of course. Then in normal presses, in some presses, there's always a good position for the high balls in the, let's say, in the halfway on the lines. A lot of that to that spaces. And then today in, in top hockey, there's a lot of high balls, short ones, maybe 10, 15 meter one into boxes or into these zones that are created. If there's a teammate standing there with no opposition that nobody can put pressure, it's a lot, it's really used right now to put a ball there, that guy receives the ball, he cannot be pressed, and from there we play on. Perfect. Thank you so much. I learned a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. It's a pleasure. I don't know, guys, somebody else? Kiche, also? Oh, well, just a comment. It's not a question. I think that... Uh, a lot of information uh, for the for us for the participants. I, and now we have to digest the information, and we tr we should think about how we trying to reach this level of hockey. Okay, which is very difficult in some cases. Of of course, I know, I know. But one of the important point is. Try to try to to teach player for principles with with exercise. Of course, you need the exercise. Now exercise, you you can't transfer the information because when you uh, when you design an exercise, it's communication as well. Just you are not talking, but the, the exercise is talking for you. The concept are very important to understand how the sort of things you have to use for increasing the level of hockey. Well, 
this is one of the, the things. The other point is uh, be, be pay attention about the technique, how you have to receive the ball, the posture and the profiles in order to get better position to keep going. And one of the uh, one of the indicators that we have is that there are many many indicators. You can use every indicator that you want to use. One of the very important indicators is when the game is not interrupted, means that you are playing, you are approaching to this style. Doesn't matter if you are close, but when you are approaching to one of these style, one of the indicators is not it's the game okay not unforced error not a stupid false not a stick false not obstruction and everything is part of the instruction you know if you want to increase your ball possession by passing and receiving the ball properly you have to decrease all the sort of thing you go but that's that's very very basic common but sometimes when we are in training what happened is because the dynamic of the game sometimes disturb our attention in the technique because sometimes the coaches are happy just because the game is very dynamic. How many mistakes you we make losing possession to one side, losing possession to the other side? Very simple, very uh, very conceptually, but try to think about this basic skill to improve your game. Thank you, Javier, for your contribution. It was very, very important for us. Discipline, for sure. Um, that's it for me. Thank you again. Thank you, teacher. Now, you have to clarify. Sorry, yes? There no, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah. There is a, Go ahead. There's a question from Tony Trotman. You want to answer it, Javier? Before yes, for sure. Close. I was reading. Uh, I was reading right now. Uh, if there's, a, he's saying, if there's a difference between men and women in the execution of these principles, personally, no. We use these principles for our whole club. Boys or girls use exactly the same. Of course, the hockey is different between boys and girls. But like I said, in my opinion, these principles can be done at any level, from the first team to the U14 women uh, third team. Let's say uh, that's what we try to do when we choose them. And I also want to add a bit together with what Chite was saying that, of course, everybody has a different reality where he's coaching and some of the things that maybe I can do at this level cannot be done in other levels, of course. For me, the main point here is uh, that the objective of this uh, presentation was <laughs> to try to inspire people to create your own principles that can be different, can be simple, doesn't matter. But for me, you should try to sit down and, and have these principles clear. You should have it and know it by your team. Uh, and I just show mine as an example, but the idea is to, to promote that. So people in your own team, you can develop and know everybody, try to get to know what you are trying to do at every moment. That was how we started, and that's the whole point of it. So if you're done, uh, I don't know if you want to add anything else, if there are any more questions. Okay, there's one more. Hello, Andres. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the question from Andres is about uh, when we lose the ball, why to put immediate pressure instead of running back and cover the center of the field? And uh, for me, the, 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 the answer is exactly what I tried to say before, that if we put immediate pressure, what we are trying to achieve is that the counterattack doesn't even start, okay? I think that if we run backwards, of course, in some cases, we will have to do it because we are not in good position, but I don't think that's the ideal situation. If you are just running back, they will be able to run and running with space, with speed, is really difficult to stop them after. So if we can stop them with immediate pressure in a good position before they can, uh, they can accelerate, I think it's much better. Uh, I see another question from SBU. Sorry, I don't know who that is. Um, it says if I think that uh, being strict with principles can limit creativity, and how can you balance it? I think that's an amazing question. I really like it. Uh, and that's a bit what I say. I think that principle, this is a bit has to do with player intelligence. Players must know 
when they have to apply a principle, which one, and when they have to not to follow any guideline. Okay, if a player has the ball in the 25, they should know they, they are allowed to try to go forward, to try to go through a skill. Um, yeah, I, I, that's a bit the speech I think you give as a coach. I try to be really open. I try to encourage players to, to make their own decisions and to try to do something new, let's say. Um, but yeah, I, that's sometimes I agree. Sometimes if you are so strict, it can be a problem. I, I would say try to have your principles, try not to be strict. And when a player does something out of the book, let's say, uh, talk to him, try to reflect on it, why he did it, if it was a good decision or not. And if it's a good decision, yeah, encourage it. Eh? Okay, there's a really big text. I don't know what that is. I think that someone was copying and pasting something else. And yeah, yeah, at the recess. Okay, it's thank you for our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no worries. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, I'm really happy to share. I always say the same. I, I think I'm a lucky guy to be working in a country like Belgium with really top level hockey. I'm really thankful for all, for the for the Pan American Federation, they really helped me a lot with, with education, with when I was here, they also helped me going to different courses. So of course, I'm happy to, to be able to give a bit of feedback and try to share, as I said, my experience. If somebody can learn from it, for me, it's amazing. Thank you very much, Javier. Thank you, Gita. We, we will have you, Javier, back uh, on Friday with the Spanish session, so. Yes, easier for me, soon. luckily. <laughs> Thank you very okay. much. Thank Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you, Chichi, of course, and thank everybody that was here and stayed for the whole hour and a half now. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, you, Javi.